Mr. Speaker, my name is Kithure Kindiki. I am 52 years old. I was born in Tharakanithi and grew up there. Went to primary school there. And upon my completion of secondary education, I studied law. I have a Bachelor of Laws degree from my university, which I obtained in 1998. I have a Master of Law from the University of Pretoria, and I have a PhD in International Law from the University of Pretoria, which I obtained in 2002. I am married, I have th three children, and I have worked in the last 25, 26 years in various capacities. Um, I'm an advocate of the High Court of Kenya of 24 years standing. And in the process of my career, honorable speaker, I have worked as a lecturer I taught at Moi University for three years and later on at the University of Nairobi for nine years. I rose from the position of assistant lecturer until I became associate dean of the Faculty of Law at the University of Nairobi. In between, I was head of Department of Public Law. I have been licensed to practice law in Kenya but also before international courts and tribunals, including the International Criminal Court, where I still remain in the list of defense counsel. Mr. Speaker, sir, I have been consulted for many organizations, including UN agencies, regional organizations like IGAD, COMESA, African Union, East African Community, and also, I am a member of a number of professional organizations, including the Academic Council for the United Nations System, the International Association on the Study of Forced Migration, the International Co uh, Commission of Jurists, the East African Law Society, and the Law Society of Kenya. I submit. Thank you. Uh, status of compliance. Mr. Speaker, sir, I have filed to Parliament through the clerk my compliance with the Higher Education Loans Board, my compliance with the Kenya Revenue Authority in terms of uh, tax compliance. I also have uh, filed my compliance with all the other statutory uh, bodies, including ESCC, as well as the clearance from a recognized credit bureau, as uh, was guided. And therefore, I want to submit, Mr. Speaker, that I've complied with all the statutory requirements as was guided by this house and you have all the documents yes i do uh, you'll pass them on to that sergeant next to you to give to sarah kyoko to have a look at uh, th does that include the certificates and, and yes and yes okay all yes. right she'll uh, compare with the copies that you sent to parliament I will now open the session for asking and interrogating the nominee. And I'll give the first shot to the debut speaker. Professor Kindiki, uh, 
I know this is within your knowledge that the Maraga Task Force on Police Reforms identified many challenges in the National Police Service, the Kenya Prison Service, and the National Youth Service as underfunding, endemic corruption, poor handling of human capital and development. Uh, so could you highlight for us some of the police reforms that you undertook during your just ended tenure as Cabinet Secretary for Inter Interior and Internal S uh, National S Administration? And, and also, if approved, what are some of the measures that you will put in place to, rec to implement some of those recommendations? Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I forgot to say between 2022 and 11th July, 2024, I was the Cabinet Secretary for Interior and National Administration. Uh, Mr. Speaker, in, resp in response to the question by the Deputy Speaker, I respond as follows. That the task force that was established to recommend legal policy, institutional, and other reforms in the National Police Service and the Kenya Prison Service made far-reaching recommendations on a number of issues, including welfare issues, leadership and accountability issues, career progression and succession management in the National Police Service, and also operational capabilities, equipment, and so forth. Mr. Speaker, sir, that task force recommended 221 uh, recommendations that require administrative action. It also recommended a further 178 recommendations which require um, funding but do not require any changes in law or policy. The task force recommended another 177 recommendations, which may not require funding, but require legislative and policy changes. And finally, the task force recommended 23 recommendations in connection with the National Police Service, not, not the Kenya Prison Service. 23 of them that require consultations and concurrence with the National Security Council. We have, in the period when I have been the Cabinet Secretary for Interior, we have been able to take action on some of the recommendations that did not require um, uh, legal or policy changes. For example, we've rolled out a massive police equipment modernization program, which will be rolled out in five years. And already under my um, leadership, we were able to convince the government and the national treasury to allocate seven billion shillings which has already been spent to buy air and land assets to assist officers who have been exposed to great danger, those that are helping to keep the country safe in the front line, in the fight against terror, the fight against banditry and other sophisticated organized crimes. And therefore, this equipment is already up and running especially mine resistance, uh, ambush protected vehicles, armored personnel carriers, personal protection equipment, air, uh, and also aerial um, unmanned vehicles, which are commonly known as drones. And we've been able to restore the police air wing, which had collapsed. And we have uh, uh, some of the aircrafts which are now operational and helping us with air surveillance. And we have also hoping in the, in the next financial year, if, if I am approved by this house, we'll be able to purchase 
additional gunship helicopters to help us um, finish the remaining work in terms of the fight against terror, the fight against banditry and other organized crimes. Mr. Speaker, I also need to point out that because of the grave issues around leadership and succession management and career progression in the, in the National Police Service, during my 21 months as the Cabinet Secretary for Interior, we've been able to put in place, operationalize the National Police Leadership Academy, which we opened, His Excellency the President opened in Gong. And this is the academy that is helping us put together a curriculum that will help us put in place short courses, professional courses to retool, reskill our police officers, especially those that are in leadership, and also provide a fast track process of identifying, nurturing leadership uh, among our police officers. And therefore, going forward with the academy now operational, we believe that in the next few years, we're going to inculcate not only fast um, uh, 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 succession management and career progression um, a program, but also we're going to have a very motivated leadership within our uh, uh, police officers. We have also, of course, uh, uh, taken action around welfare issues. Already the f uh, increments for the the first, um, the first uh, increments that were proposed by the task force have already been uh, put in place. We have also, in terms of giving motivation to our officers, uh, also operationalized the National Police Service uh, uh, Hospital, which is uh, supposed to take care of uh, those who are injured in the front line so that they are not exposed to um, 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 health or even subsequent risks when they visit uh, ordinary hospitals. So by and large, that's what we've done. And finally, on the proposals that require legislative reforms and policy reforms. We have formulated about six pieces of legislation which are ready. They are just waiting for stakeholder participation and then they'll be conveyed to parliament through cabinet. And if I can highlight this as I end that um, response, Mr. Speaker, they include uh, number one, the National Police Service Amendment Bill 2024, the National Police Service Commission uh, Amendment Bill 2024, the National um, uh, Forensic Laboratory um, a Bill, a Services Bill 2024. We have also uh, formulated um, the a, a bill which will also assist us in the leadership and the command um, uh, oversight in the National uh, Police Service. I submit. Thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Um, my question to the CS nominee.